two extant philosophies were provided by the Star Wars universe on the nature of how energetic action might be channeled through the world around us. These philosophies, that of the light side and the dark side, act as expedients, so that those who follow their precepts are better able to act with 100% conviction when it counts, and to reap the benefit of the consequent efficacy such prior resolution provides. Should someone be born into the Star Wars universe, and should someone prove Force-sensitive, having studied both light and dark side philosophy, they would be presented with the choice of which side of the Force they would devote themselves to study and to follow. Some might choose the light side of the Force with noble intent. Others would choose the light side out of pure pressure, perhaps to fall. Others might opt for the dark side out of feelings of inferiority or a hunger for power, and still others would find the philosophy of the Sith interesting and curious and eventually resonant to such a degree that they may opt for the dark side not out of greed or ego, but out of an intellectual choice. Today, I am going to examine the underlying life philosophy espoused by the Sith Code, missing the power of the dark side, as well as the aspects of human nature most activated by the dark side of the Force. Isaac Asimov wrote short stories for monthly periodicals back in the 60s. My dad collected a lot of these, and we were both kind of sci-fi aficionados. So occasionally I would stumble across a story, a story by Asimov that had not ever really been pushed past some small publication. Rather, he had, I think, attempted to obfuscate some of his stories ex post facto. And one of them, I don't remember the title of the story, um, but I remember the specifics. There was, it was set in space, long after humanity had colonized Vega, and there was a, an alien race that was heading towards Earth, intent on conquest. I think they were called the Diabolos, because they were a sulfur-based race, Although the legions of Diabolos vastly outnumbered the human forces, the humans obliterated the Diabolos. The Diabolos, humanity later discovered, had never fought amongst themselves, never having seen a point to such. The history of humankind, however, was marked with nearly incessant conflict. Eons of intraspecies conflict pushed humanity to develop its weaponry and space tech, as well as its battle strategy and tactics, until they were far superior to that of the Diabolos. It was conflict itself which spurred and outnumbered humanity to victory over a vastly larger force. I remember reading a blurb by Asimov included in the tail end of the story. It was a great story an interview, and an interviewer was communicating to him. They asked him, why didn't you push for it to be published to a wider audience? And allegedly, Asimov smiled wryly and said, because I didn't like the conclusion I arrived at. Peace if perceived in a certain way, is a fantastic opportunity. Many of my subscribers have expressed a lack of motivation in their lives, feeling there is no point to excelling when doing fine is good enough. Within this context especially, let us examine the Sith Code and the psychology of the dark side of the Force and how it might be effectively leveraged, channeled in constructive ways, to motivate a man who is living in a period of unmotivated peace or boredom in his life. In this video, we will examine Sith philosophy and the ethical and practical repercussions of taking it to its logical conclusion, as well as how to reap the most benefit from Sith wisdom without becoming a violent or evil person. Chances are if you're watching my channel and this video, you're a man. And chances are if you're a man, you have what I would consider a masculine core. Think about movies that make you tear up or move your heart in a profound way. I think about Braveheart, for example, the scene where William Wallace, astride a horse, is galloping along the lines of the Scottish army just as they're about to retreat. He's entreating them to stand and fight the larger, more well-equipped British army. What would you do without freedom, he entreats them. Fight, and you might die, run and you'll live for a while, but you'd trade everything for a chance to show the English they can take your life, but they can't take your freedom. 
Sith philosophy places the ultimate premium on the power of freedom, the unwavering devotion to pure self-actualization without constraint, the controlled exposure of oneself to conflict, com competition, and risk. In this video, I'm going to provide... In this video, I will proceed through an interpretation of the Sith Code line by line, and then take more of a high-level look at how the wisdom might be practically applied in an overarching sense toward the betterment of a man's life. Let us first examine the code line by line. Peace is a lie. There is only passion. It can be argued that the core tenet of the Jedi Code prioritizes the needs of the other over the needs of the self, while the core tenet of the Sith Code prioritizes the needs of the self over the needs of the other. It could also be argued that the core tenet of the Jedi truth is that peace is the most important thing, that, that peace is truth, and that dharma, conflict, and ego are all illusions by nature. But this line, the first line of the Sith Code, breaks with that assertion. It, the core concept here is that regardless of our desires or our ideals, the truth, the hardcore truth of life, is that conflict abounds in the immediate. Hunger, thirst, resource scarcity, and the impetus set upon us by our own cognizance of our own mortality are but a few drivers of this conflict, but it exists in everyone's life. The second part of the line, there is only passion, this line embraces the latent existence of our id, the subconscious ocean of desire latent within us. And it is in full awareness of this aspect of our psyches that we move into the next line. Through passion, I gain strength. Here we begin to delve into philosophical naturalism and concepts proffered by Nietzsche, like master and slave morality and active nihilism. The Sith Code encourages us to consider the power contained within the notion that might makes right. According to the Sith Code, if someone is willing to harness the latent power of their desire nature and rend asunder the boundaries of external ethical considerations in the pursuit of ultimate strength, that person sets down a path towards what might be considered the purest form of self-actualization. This person begins to perceive himself as a master, not a slave. Perceive the environment as existing to serve him and not the other way around. And he begins to forge himself and the environment around him according to his will. Believing that strength is the natural extension of a directed fusion of his thoughts and his emotions. Incorporated in tandem, in synergy, in synergistic fashion, as opposed to constantly in conflict. If one is living a Jedi lifestyle, it could be argued that they are constantly in conflict with their nature, that they are using their intellect to overcome the base urges uh, extant within them. A Sith might argue that uh, you are working synergistically within yourself. If both your passions, your latent id, your desire nature, and your intellect are in complete synergistic motion towards the achievement and self-actualization, towards the achievement and actualization of your goals. This is, in its way, the ultimate rejection of collectivism, the ultimate embrace of individualism at its purest and most unadulterated extension. A man will draw upon his emotions, his passions, and his id to fuel him, he will reject passivity and instead take action to its logical conclusion. Through strength, I gain power. I think this is commonly where many Sith err in interpretation of the Sith Code, ultimately allowing their egos to take full control of them. This is where we see Sith in comic books, in video games, in movie literature, etc. Run astray of the wisdom latent within the code and give in to their base urges completely instead of channeling them towards continual self-actualization and improvement. Power tends to corrupt absent wisdom. Many Sith are ironically too weak of character to contain the power they gain through strength. Sort of the whole, you know, talent will take you places your character can't keep you, that kind of thing. Power gained absent character and integrity is quickly lost. When I say integrity here, 
Within the Sith context, I would not be referring to integrity in the Western cultural sense. You know, do unto others as you'd want them to do unto you, that sort of thing. I'm talking about being integrated. I'm referencing a person who has concocted a code of conduct for himself that is internally consistent and to which he always holds himself accountable. Because there is nothing within the Sith Code about constructing for oneself a personal set of honor or integrity, I find this to be a weakness in the Sith Code. As power gained in and of itself will quickly lend itself to self-destructive entropy, absent some form of order. Now the Sith Code would probably shoot back that this would be a form of constriction, a form of chains, limiting one's freedom. We'll get more into that in a second. Through power I gain victory. A Sith will delve deep within himself and after introspection examine that everything that holds him back is really an external manifestation of an internal blockage. He will look to the exterior causes of this internal blockage and hurl himself with full force and 100% conviction into conflict with it. In the Sith Code's most constructive form, if he feels emotionally weak, he will seek constructive ways to challenge his emotional weaknesses until they become strengths. If he feels physically weak, he might take up martial arts. If he feels afraid of something, he might face his fears, etc. He will constantly seek to strengthen his weaknesses and his strengths, drawing from his passion and his internal latent desire in nature to fuel his transition from weakness to strength in the seeking of perfection. A Sith is likely a nihilist, but he does not have to be a narcissist. In fact, you could argue, in fact, one could argue that an enlightened Sith seeks to expunge his vanity by consistently and constantly placing himself on the edge of life, the edge of his talents, the edge of his capabilities in order to push himself to grow. Not pushing himself so far as to be destroyed or taking stupid life-threatening risks, but taking calculated risks and engaging in conflict where it's constructive. A Sith rejects cultural mores about rules and restrictions, adhering instead only to the rules of engagement so far as it seeks as it serves to improve himself. Any spirit of fairness he holds will be due to his desire to test himself honestly and assess uh, in a grounded manner where he stands currently with regards to his abilities. A Sith would know that the promises of peace, a Sith would believe that the promises of peace and tranquility society often espouses uh, if he yields or if he backs off are lies, anesthetization for the masses, absent solid rationale. He has fought enough battles to know what it feels like to give up. He knows that giving up is easy and will flood the brain with a neurochemical cocktail designed to make him feel pleasurable sensations, relief. But he ultimately knows that following that high, that opiate anesthetization, uh, he will feel more pain at having lost than it would hurt to gain victory. And it is this knowledge of the weakening aspect of defeat that drives him to push through to victory. And so he continues on the path to excellent superiority and full self-actualization. Through victory, my chains are broken. This is, I think, the most impactful line of the Sith Code. Deep within each man is a strong impulse to strike away the chains of his circumstances and to gain freedom. It is through triumph over adversity or odds that a man can progress and grow. Now, freedom may not mean freedom in the Braveheart sense. If we live in a first world society, we often have many freedoms already, but I may be talking about freedom of debt, freedom of someone else's control over your actions, etc. In many ways, this is the rejection of the, what a Sith might consider to be the lies of oneness, of wholeness, of collectivism and unity. The ultimate embrace, instead of individual effort, triumph over Oz, and the autonomous liberation of self. I think this is the greatest kernel of wisdom to be found in the Sith Code. However, there are many shortcomings, I think, in the Sith Code as well to consider. 
Um, you know, it, it's such an absolutist philosophy that it fails many of the ethical and rational litmus tests one must run it by in order to adopt a philosophy in and of itself. That doesn't mean we can't learn from it, but I think much of the wisdom has already been um, taken from it, so let's now examine it at a more high-level view. If Jedi and the Jedi Code is the ultimate altruism, the Jedi the ultimate altruists, the idealists, the Sith are the nihilistic pragmatists of the universe. With a Jedi, function follows form. A Jedi is concerned first and foremost with the ethics of any given action, and his actions will typically follow that ethically based system. The Jedi Code is almost Buddhist in its portrayal of Dharma as illusory, seeking instead to acquire serendipity, seeking instead to reach serendipity through the abandonment of ego. The Sith Code is the ultimate reciprocal opposite of this. Form follows function. If you opt for the dark side, a large premium is placed on expediency and effectiveness. A Sith will ask himself first, will this work? Will it function? And then, if he is concerned with such, he will examine the ethics. There are many flaws with this sort of absolute, uh, naturalistic, pragmatist individualism. The Sith Code uh, disregards the worth of the other. It is ironic that a code so highly motivated by the attainment of freedom through the securing of power neglects one of the securing of power's central tenets. Power is best secured through a community of powerful individuals. The Sith might work together, but each will know that the Alliance is merely one of utility and expedience, and that betrayal will eventually follow. Absent any sort of kindness, courtesy, or respect, a Sith, regardless of how powerful he is, will fall to a united coalition of numerous, if less powerful, Jedi. The individual will be overwhelmed by the masses, absent true friends, absent loyalty. The Sith Code rejects friendship. It is the utter worship of freedom acquired at any cost. It neglects that friends can help one along their path to breaking one's own chains and rejects the notion of even the individual's worth, ironically, by promoting the disposability of self. If one has no friends or allies and some deus ex machina bullshit happens, like they get struck down by lightning or dangerously injured by something they couldn't have foreseen or prepared for, I mean, they might have lackeys, but it's very likely if you know anything about the Sith, a Sith's apprentice is always seeking to strike down his master after he's learned enough. So the Sith's apprentice may be as likely to finish the job as to help out his master. A Sith master might have lackeys, but again, these lackeys, who knows their loyalty? Either they're intimidated and coerced through fear, or they're paid, and they could find money somewhere else as well. So, yeah, I suppose a lackey could rescue a Sith Master, but is this something that you really want to rely upon? Now, I think that this is interesting because if you don't have any friends to help you through the bullshit of life, it makes it very difficult to enjoy life. You know, if you're constantly pursuing freedom, actually enjoying freedom becomes pretty difficult. Freedom absent the capacity to enjoy it makes the Sith philosophy in and of itself bereft of joy or pleasure. Apart from the immediate joys of conquest and pride and ego, satiation, uh, and apart from the satiation of basal or carnal urges. A Sith also requires society to be able to conquer and to be able to practice his pursuit of perfection effectively. If one is truly devoted to exercising mastery at all costs, he is going to need an organized social structure. Again, the individual, if he is pursuing selfishness to its you know, to its extreme conclusion, will fall short in this regard. Now, hey, you might say at this juncture, Hey, Coterie, what if someone is willing to pretend friendship and then manipulate people like Niccolo Machiavelli, you know, and, and sort of uh, use their intellect to uh, foster them towards the, the manipulator's own ends? You know, just because you follow the Sith doesn't mean you have to always act like you're following the Sith. Maybe you can just put on the mask and actually be you know, evil, essentially, underneath. I would disagree with the worth of acting like Machiavelli, of always lying and always acting evil. I think that acting evil is detrimental to the self. I mean, you know, even if we're working within the framework of the Sith philosophy, which prioritizes the self over the other, I still think it's detrimental to the self, because 
Uh, it deprives one of the opportunity for maintaining or gaining strength through honest challenge. If one is always lying all the time, you're essentially backing off from the potential for a conflict. And each time you back off, you know, it's, it diminishes you in a Sith sense a bit more. You know, noticeable, you know, notable Sith such as Revan were able to harness the wisdom of the Sith Code and elements of the dark side, but take it with a grain of salt and accomplish things for the greater good. Now, he adopted some Machiavellian traits, but whether he was evil, that's debatable. Uh, I'm not here to path eth pass ethical judgment over his desire to bring order to the galaxy. If you're familiar with Knights of the Old Republic, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I think that the greatest benefit can be derived from the Sith Code if it's taken with a grain of salt and approached rationally as opposed to emotionally. All in all, I find the greatest wisdom to be drawn from the Sith Code lies in the recognition of our latent drives and the acceptance that peace will not last forever. This means you should enjoy peace while you can, but also be preparing for times of conflict. I also think that there's a lot to be gained from the idea of victory leading to freedom, to the breaking of chains. I think oftentimes uh, it takes that extra... It takes that extra resolution beforehand, so that when you enter a conflict, a conflict part of your life, or when it's foisted upon you, you'll have that prior resolution to break through to the other side and experience freedom from whatever limitations or constraints are being foisted upon you by exterior circumstance. So again, I, I don't advocate for the violent or evil side of the Sith Code, but I think a constructive form of self-actualization wherein one can take a breather from time to time on their way to perfecting themselves, uh, pursuit of self-actualization, wherein one can still take a breather from time to time, kick back with friends, and reap the fruits of their many uh, Sith Code-inspired, self-actualized labors. In this way, the Sith Code can help a man properly channel his innate masculine drive towards securing the feeling of freedom, and breaking out of uh, constriction, while still exhibiting recognition of the worth and personhood of the human beings around him. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you, gentlemen, and have a pleasant evening.